It's Bible time. <gasps> it's Bible time. It's Bible time. It's, it's Bible, Bible time. time. <gasps> it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's, it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ. That's me. Get your Bible if you have one, because it's time to study the Bible together. The Bible is God's Word. God helps men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. We can learn a lot about God from the miracles He did. We can see how caring He is and the way He provided for His people's needs, even when they complained against Him. We can see God's power over creation and how He stopped the Jordan River from flowing so the Israelites could cross it on dry ground. We can see that God can be trusted and how God made the walls of Jericho fall down. We can see God has power and control over all the universe and how he held the sun and moon in place for almost a full day. Today, we're going to read about another miracle and see what we learn about God from this miracle. This miracle involves a tomb. Do you know what a tomb is? What do you picture in your mind when you hear the word tomb? Hmm. I'm going to show you some pictures. Stand up if you think the picture shows a tomb. Sit down if the picture is not of a tomb. Actually, all of those are pictures of different tombs. People in different times or different cultures or who live in different places have different types of tombs. Some people don't even use tombs. But the event we're going to read about today involves a tomb. And the tomb we're going to read about today may have looked similar to this tomb. Except the tomb from today's passage also had a giant heavy stone that covered the entrance. Let's read and see what happened. I'm going to read from the book of Mark. Mark is in the New Testament and is a book of the Gospels. A man named Mark, also known as John Mark, wrote the book of Mark with the help of the Holy Spirit. The book of Mark records true things that really happened with real people. I'm going to read Mark 16 verses 1 through 8. At this point in history, Jesus had died on the cross and had been buried in a tomb. Some of the people we're going to read about are Salome and two different women named Mary. While I read, you act out what these women did. The Sabbath day ended. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices. They were going to use them for Jesus' body. Pretend to buy some spices. Very early on the first day of the week, they were on their way to the tomb. It was just after sunrise. Pretend to be walking to the tomb. They asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? Pretend to be asking a question to the people walking with you. Then they looked up and saw that the stone had been rolled away. The stone was very large. They entered the tomb. As they did, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe. He was sitting on the right side. They were alarmed. Pretend to enter the tomb and look alarmed by seeing someone sitting there. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified, but he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they had put him. Go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. It will be just as he told you. The women were shaking and confused. Pretend to be shaking and confused. They went out and ran away from the tomb. Pretend to run away from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Great job acting out what Mary, Mary, and Salome did. I've drawn some pictures that represent different parts of what happened, but the pictures are out of order. Can you help me put them back in the right order? What happened first? Hmm. Out of these four pictures, I think it is the one with the three women on a path. Okay, what happened next? Where were they going? They were going to a tomb. 
they wondered how they were going to get the stone rolled away from the tomb so they could put spices on Jesus' body. But when they got to the tomb, the stone had already been rolled away. So the women at the tomb with the door open is the second picture. What happened next? What happened after the women got to the tomb? They went inside. Jesus was gone and a man was there. The man told the women that Jesus was alive and was going to see the disciples in Galilee. Now the correct picture is last. The women ran away. They were so scared they didn't tell anyone anything. Great job putting the pictures back in the correct order. What a miracle. Jesus really did die. He really was buried. He really rose from the dead. He was not in the tomb because he was alive. Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sins, but he rose from the dead. He beat sin and death and proved that he is the Son of God. We can have eternal life by grace through faith in Jesus because he died for our sins and rose from the dead. Praise the Lord. Jesus is alive. Now it's time for Eyes on Him, the part of our lesson when we focus on what the scriptures say about God. When you study the Bible, look for what the scripture reveals or shows about God. Then think about how that knowledge of God should impact, change, matter to your life. I see that Jesus really rose from the dead. His body was not in the tomb. Where was his body? The angel told the women, Jesus was alive. He was going to Galilee. Other verses in the Bible record some of the things Jesus did after he rose from the dead. Jesus really is alive. I see that God has power over life and death. Death does not overrule God's plan. God doesn't have plans that death messes up. God has power over life and death. I see that God is faithful. Jesus' resurrection happened just like God said it would happen. Jesus had been saying he was going to die, but then rise from the dead. Even writers of the Old Testament wrote about Jesus' death and resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead just as God said he would. God is faithful. Jesus really is the Son of God. The resurrection of Jesus proves that what Jesus said is true. Everything Jesus said is true, including the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. To know Jesus is to know God. What else does this passage show you about God? How should you live differently because of who God is? And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder! The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on orange. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, Who was the man in the tomb? That's a good question. The man wore white robes, which indicates he might have been an angel, but Mark didn't really make it clear. When you wonder about what a verse means, it is wise to see if any other verses in the Bible can help you understand that verse better. Thankfully, Mark was not the only person who recorded what happened. All of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record the resurrection of Jesus. Some of them record different details, so when we put the records together, we get a more complete understanding of what happened. Regarding this specific detail, other verses let us know this man was indeed an angel. In fact, John records that there were two angels. So in addition to the angel Mark wrote about, there was another angel in the tomb whom Mark did not mention. When you wonder about what something means in the Bible, it can often be helpful to see if there are any other verses about that same topic. In this case, other verses helped us to know that the man in the tomb was an angel, and there was actually another angel there too. Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. He rose from the dead and appeared to many people. His tomb is empty because Jesus is alive. Like the women at the tomb, you have heard the truth about Jesus. How will you respond? Will you respond with fear and unbelief? Will you go away and not say anything to anyone? Or will you respond with faith and action? Will you put your faith in Jesus? Will you tell others the wonderful news that Jesus is alive? 
Jesus died for your sins. He rose from the dead and proved He is God's Son. Believe in Jesus and be saved. If you want to know more about how to do that, watch the separate video called How to Become a Christian. There's a link to it in the description. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for proving that you are who you say you are. Your miracles show your power and holiness. Your miracles show your love for us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins and to rise from the dead. Thank you for making the way for us to be saved. Please give us the grace to respond with faith and action. Please help us to trust in Jesus and to live for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's Word with you today. There's no better time than Bible time, and I hope you will join me next time for Bible Time with Aunt JJ. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to BibleTimeWithAuntJJ.com for free activities that go along with today's Bible study. It's Bible Time with Aunt JJ!